Hello everybody, so today we're doing a 1UZ BBTI into an IS200, so let's get into it. Right, so as discussed, this is a 1UZ BBTI into an IS200. This is actually an older harness that we did a couple of years ago. Customer now put the engine into an IS200 shell. It used to be in an Alteza shell. So this is actually a very short video because it's just literally going to be where we changed the patch harness section around to match up to an IS200 rather than a Alteza. But what I will do, I'm still going to go through the layout so the customer knows exactly where everything goes. Uh, hopefully they remember when they took it off, but we'll go through it again. So starting at the ECU box now, as per the standard one, you've got your gray plug there, your black plug there, and your blue plug over there. So that is all fine. We've got our patch harness over there, so that interacts with your two standard IS200 plugs in there. You've got your six ECU plugs that go into there, so they come straight in there. They're all different, so you can't plug them in in the wrong place. We've got the existing MPX converter device, because obviously it came standard with the original harness that we built. And then lastly, we've got our automatic transmission emulator. So this gets rid of the codes for the automatic gearbox that cause it to run um, funny without the gearbox being there. So that's all in there. Then we've got our grommet that's obviously gonna pop down into that little section of the ECU box over there. That's gonna then run up the back of the engine there. And here it's going to split into two sections. So first section is just the one running down the front here. So we'll start here and then we'll come back and go around there. So coming down here, we've got our injector 7 popping out over there. Coming over here, we've got injector 5 and we've got coil 5. We also have coil number 7. So you do need to be wary of this handle. That obviously is the long one. So that one won't reach there. So you shouldn't be able to mix it up. But yeah, just remember that. Coming along to the front of the box, and then we've got the breakout here, and we've got, that's going to injector three, and coil three. We've then got the cam sensor that's underneath there as well, so that's gonna pop in over there. You've then also got your noise filter, which should screw, plug, plug into your noise filter, it's already on your inlet manifold over there. If not, you can just tuck that away. Then the harness comes along the front over here, and it breaks out towards the front there, and it goes to injector one and coil one. Also goes to the oil control valve for the left bank. Also pops out and goes to the TPS sub harness on a 1UZ VVTI. So you can see there's the TPS sensor just inside there. So they created a little sub harness that goes down into there. Obviously you can't reach down at the bottom to plug it in and out when you wanna take the harness off. The harness then still makes its way underneath over here. Pops out over here to go to the drive-by-wire motor. That's including the drive-by-wire motor and the clutch control. This is the early type of drive-by-wire that Toyota did. Also pops out here and goes to your cam sensor just at the front here. Right, the harness will then carry on down there and you'll see over here you've got little plastic clips that'll hold it in close to the engine over there and over there as well. It's then gonna pop down and break out over here and it's gonna break out into two sections because one is gonna be your oil and that you can then bring down here and plug into your oil pressure switch which is gonna be over here. Remember this is an LS430 engine so that's why it's got the forward facing uh, oil filter housing. So that's gonna plug in over there but then also coming down through here, out the bottom here and then it's gonna plug into your crank sensor over there. You'll see in this case we've got the oil pressure switch over here. Obviously in your case it would be at the back over there. Okay, so that's that section of the harness there. At the back here, you've got a little section that pops out over here. We've then got our earth switch that goes over there. Now remember on a 1UZ, you're going to be using the M8 bolt that goes on there, not that one. That's a 3UZ bolt over there. This would be the 1UZ VVTI over here. Coming down over there, we've then got our lambda sensor plug. All right. Remember to keep that metal shield that goes in between there because obviously that's the only thing protecting your plug from the heat of the exhaust. So do remember that. The last section popping out of here is your gearbox harness and that's going to run down over there because it's going to form part of our testing but we're just going to still test the entire engine to harness to make sure it's 100 percent before it goes back to the customer next up you've got your sub harness now obviously we didn't need the customer sub harness so i've got my little temporary sub harness over there that's just going out to the starter and in his case he's got another plug that's coming out there going to the two knock sensors and the starter solenoid all right lastly you've obviously got your main power cable that goes to the positive side of your battery over there Right, I'm gonna pop around the other side now so that we can go and have a look at where we go from there. Right, so coming along the plastic section over here, we've got our, another earth strap that pops out over there. Again, same scenario, we've used the 3UZ slot, but you'd be using this M8 hole down there. That's used for the 1UZ BBTI. Coming to the front of the plastic now, we're then gonna to go to injector eight and coil eight. Nice and simple and straightforward. 
Come a little bit forward and it's gonna break up and you're gonna to go to your ACIS plug, which is just over there. Okay, you're then obviously gonna to go to injector six and coil six as well, All right? It's gonna come a little bit more forward over there and it's gonna break off and go to your cam sensor plug, which is just over there. Injector four and coil four over there. A little bit forward again, it's gonna break out here and go to injector two and coil two. Also gonna break out and go to the coolant temp sensor, which is gonna plug in straight over there. Also gonna to go to the oil control valve for the right bank, so that plugs in there. And then coming along here, we're gonna break out here and that's gonna to go to your mass airflow sensor over there, okay? Then coming further along down here, and you're gonna see the harness is gonna break out here at the bottom, and that's gonna to go to your alternator plug. That's the three pin plug over there. It's also gonna to go to your oil level plug, which is gonna plug in over there. And then lastly, down at the back here, it's gonna to go to your lambda sensor plug. And that's that one over there. All right, there was one that I nearly forgot, and that's the accelerator pedal position sensor. That actually pops out again over here, makes its way across the throttle and plugs in over there. Okay. Right, so that's the entire layout of the harness. So what we're gonna do now, as per usual, we're gonna jump in and look at doing all the testing with both the ignition on and the engine running. Okay, so I'm gonna get it all sorted out. I'll be back in a second and I'll see you guys soon. Right, so now we're gonna move into the testing portion of this harness and obviously we wanna make sure the engine runs and everything works as it should because we've now adapted it to an IS200 from an Altezza adapted harness originally. Okay, so again, two sections, nice and simple and straightforward. We're gonna be doing a section just with the ignition on to make sure everything is working correctly inside the vehicle. We're then gonna actually start the engine up and then make sure everything works there as well. All right, so I'm gonna have a quick rundown of what we're gonna do and then we'll jump straight into it. So. Immobilizer, we wanna make sure it's removed so you can see the security light is flashing. As soon as I put the key in, that should turn off. So that's what we're gonna test there. Ambient temp, we're just gonna go around to the outside temperature display over there and then make sure that that is working as it should do. Check engine light, we're gonna make sure that pops up over there. Charge light, we're gonna make sure that pops over there. We've got oil pressure, make sure that pops up over there. Then we're gonna test the reverse. So I'm just gonna bridge the reverse switch over here, okay? And then we're gonna test the speedo. So again, I got my little device to replicate a signal for the speed sensor, make sure it's popping up on the screen there. Then what we're gonna do is go over to the OBD2 machine, and that's obviously gonna allow me to make sure that is all working. So again, it is plugged directly into where the original OBD2 port is in the car. Nothing funny there, really, really simple and straightforward, okay? Right, once I got the OBD2 up and running, we're gonna then test the actual fuel pump relay. So again, the ECU is controlling the fuel pump. I've got a little video to show you exactly how that all works. So I'll put that up a link in there for you so you can go and watch that, okay? Then once we've done that, we'll get the engine up and running and we're testing the starter circuit. So what I mean by that is when I put the key in and turn to the start position, the car actually, engine actually starts. So make sure that the whole circuit from the key to there is all 100%. We're gonna make sure the taco works. So again, just making sure that that is reading correctly over there. We're gonna make sure the coolant temp's working because again, that is transmitted via MPX data. So we wanna make sure that our little box is doing its thing and the coolant temp is coming through. We're gonna make sure the ACIS works. So that's gonna be this little valve at the back. So as soon as I start it up, it's gonna go down there. I do have a really good video on that. So I'll put a link up in the top there to show you what exactly that is, how that works and why it's important to have that actually working. Then we're gonna move on to the oil control valve test. So it's for the VVTI. Basically what we do is we use our machine to um, put the cams at max um, retard and advance. So it sounds really lumpy when we do it, but what it demonstrates is that everything is working in both solenoids and electronically everything is working as it should do. We'll do the drive-by wire test. So again, these are drive-by wire, even though you can clearly see there is a cable attached to it. You can hear that it's not actually moving a throttle body. And then as soon as I get to here, Right, so you can see there. If I just touch it and it revs, we know the drive-by wire is working and we'll also hear the humming when you put the ignition on as well. Then we're gonna do injectors and coils test. So I'm gonna pull each coil injector out one by one. Then we're gonna hear for the misfire as I do that, making sure that every single cylinder is firing exactly as it should do. Then we'll come back and we'll go through the codes, make sure there are no codes that are relevant. There will be some that are there and I'll explain those for you in detail when we get there. So. Let's get to doing the test with just the ignition on. So what I am gonna do is I've got my key for my half cut over here. I'm gonna hold the camera over there and as I insert the key, let's make sure you can see the security light. As I insert the key, 
you can hear the relay click and the security light has gone off. You'll notice I haven't even turned the key yet. It's just literally the motion of putting the key in the ignition barrel causes the ECU to turn on the plus B circuit, which causes the relay to click as you hear over there, which causes originally in the car to read the key. Obviously we've removed the immobilizer, so it's no problem there, but just to make sure that that is working as it should. Right, we're gonna put the ignition on. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to the ambient temperature. So what we wanna see here is 22 degrees. Fantastic, okay, so that's coming through nicely and working exactly as it should. Next up, we're gonna check, so we've got the check engine light, we've got the oil light, and we've got the battery light over there. So that is all good. Right, let's go over to the reverse. So all I'm gonna do now is grab myself a little piece of wire. Okay, and I'm just gonna bridge that, which is exactly what your gearbox will do in your particular case. So as I bridge it, there you go. So you can hear that that is going mental there with the buzzing as it usually does. So that means the reverse circuit's working from the plug all the way to inside the vehicle. Next up, we're gonna do the speedo. So again, as per usual, the speed sensor plug has 12 volts, ground and signal because it's a Hall Effect style sensor. So all I'm doing is using those signals then to power up my little device over here. Then I'm gonna use the yellow one which outputs a signal to there and then we're gonna be able to see on the dash that that is working. So first thing I need to do is put it into that particular test mode. So let me just do that. Sorry, it's a bit difficult single-handedly to do it. So you're going to be looking at the ground for a minute. Okay, so you can see my units in test mode now. I've got the cluster over there. And all I'm going to do basically is give it a signal. So you can see there, and I remove it. And all I'm basically doing is giving the wire a signal there. And it is working like that. Fantastic, okay, so I'll quickly remove that. No longer need that anymore. Right, so that is the speedo, so let's move on to the OBD2 machine. Now what we can see is, or oh, I've already connected obviously on this one because it takes absolutely ages to load. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into function, system select, and as you will see, it picks it up as an LS400, all right? Again, plugged into your standard OBD2 port, but it picks it up exactly as it should do, okay? Right, so that's how the OBD2 test done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into testing the fuel pump and hopefully be able to hear the relay click as I do that as well. Now it says fuel pump relay and fuel pump. If you watched my video early, you'll know exactly why that is the case. But in this case, we are going to pop down there and we're gonna turn on the fuel pump. So one, two, three. And hopefully you can hear, I'm gonna turn it off now. Fantastic, so you can hear that fuel pump relay kicking in, so I know everything is absolutely fine. Obviously, when we actually start the engine, we'll know everything is okay, because my fuel pump in my little sort of temporary tank over there is wired actually directly to the car's fuel pump, 12 volts and ground. So that be absolutely fine, and once it keeps running, we know that's working exactly as it should. Right, so next plan is, I can see we've got no cooling temperature on the dash, and I think we're only showing about 47 degrees. I'm gonna start the engine up, let it warm up so we can actually see some data on the dash there, and then I'll be back and we'll go through all the starting with the engine actually running. Bear with me, I'll be with you in a second. Right, so great, I've run up a little bit so we can get some temperature reading over there, and as you can see, it has now left the needle there. Obviously, I'll be running it for a little while, so that temperature will climb up as well, so we'll come back to that when we do the coolant temp there, and hopefully that has risen up a little bit. Um, now that we're back, I'm just gonna quickly do a rundown of exactly what we're gonna do when we start the engine and what we're gonna test. It's a nice short little section, so it won't take too long. But basically, start a circuit. Again, as long as I turn the key and the car starts, we know the circuit is okay. Taco, make sure that, that rev counter signal is coming through over there. Coolant temp, we'll come back and see if it's risen anymore once I've started it. ACIS, we'll go and make sure that this one has gone down like that, so we know that's working. Oil control valve test, we'll just use the machine to carry that out. Drive-by-wire test, just gonna rev it up over there. You can actually hear the motor working there now. Then we're gonna do injectors and coils, so I'm gonna pull each injector out one by one, and then we're gonna hear the engine misfire as I do that. And then lastly, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do all the codes on the ECU for you there. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, get my ear defenders on, and then we'll jump in and start the engine. Okay, so, ear protectors on. One, two, three. There you go, so we know starter circuit works, everything is fine. We go to 
of taco there. That's all fine. Cool it, Tim. Well, it's about the same. Right, then we're going to go over to ACIS. You can see that that has gone down there, that's fine. Then oil control valve. I do apologise. Turn the ignition back on again. Right, so in relation to codes, now in this particular case, I've got the OBD2 machine plugged in, so that's how I'm gonna read the codes now. There is actually another way to read the codes. Uh, depending on your year of IS200, uh, there may be three ways to read your codes. But if you look at your OBD2 port over here, you'll see that there's a, a pin called TC or trouble codes, and then four and five, which is those ones over there, those are Earths, right? So you can go from 13 to 4 or 13 to 5. You put a paper clip in there, you bridge those together, and then you'll cause the check engine light to flash the codes like Morse code, right? That's one way of doing it, and it applies to all IS200s because you do have an OBD2 port. Now then, if your vehicle's prior 2001, you're going to have this little diagnostics port on the, in the engine bay here. Now if you look closely under the lid, you'll see there's a pin called E1 which is that one in there, in the top corner over there, third one along. Then you've got TC, which is this middle one over here. So you see there's one at the top, one at the bottom, one in there. You can bridge those ones and it does the exact same thing as bridging them in the actual OBD2 port inside the car. Okay, so it's two ways to do the same thing. Just depends on what year your car is, whether or not you have that functionality. Still the best thing to do is obviously to use your OBD2 machine because it not only gives you live data, it'll give you codes and more specifically, it'll give you exact codes. What I mean by that is, if you do the flash code system, it'll give you code 14 or 15 for a misfire. That groups four coils together. Now that doesn't tell you which coil is misfiring, it tells you which group of four coils are misfiring. Okay, so then you're only narrowing it down from eight to four. You still have four coils to go through to find the misfire. This one will tell you straight away which coil is actually misfiring. So this is by far the best data that you are going to have. Okay. I'm going to go into trouble codes now so you can see exactly what we have on the system over here okay now then there are some codes that are going to be here clearly you can see they do not cause a check engine light they do not affect the way the vehicle runs and obviously we don't remove them for that particular purpose all right the check engine light will still come on if you have a genuine fault that needs rectifying it just won't come on for these codes but just to make sure that you guys are aware of these codes and this is what you will have it's mainly the two secondary oxygen sensors. So you see bank one sensor two and bank two sensor two. Okay, that's the ones that are after the cats. We don't wire them in, they don't affect fueling, they don't affect performance, we just leave them. The codes appear in the ECU, but it does not cause a check engine light, so it's no need to worry. Next up is just the three codes for the gearbox, and that's SLU, SLT, and SLN. Now, the student among you would have noticed that on the JZ harnesses, 
You notice on some of the GS300 ones, not the Isronic, because we re re remapped those now, but we used to put these three little resistors on. That gets rid of these three codes over here. The reason we do it on the GS300 is those three codes cause a check engine light. They don't affect performance or the way it runs, they just cause a check engine light. But because the one you said doesn't cause a check engine light, no point in putting the resistors on, it just costs more money and it does absolutely nothing for you. Okay, so as you can see here clearly, five codes. That is all you should have. Anything else, like anything for the mass airflow sensor, anything for the throttle, anything for a misfire, anything for a coolant temp sensor, means a genuine problem and that will cause the check engine light to come on. Okay, and then you can rectify those issues. All right, so again, sorry about it. It's a really short video. Obviously, we built this harness many years ago, so I don't have any photos to show you guys of what it looks like. We've literally just changed the patch harness around, but also just to demonstrate that if you do have a harness built like this for an Alteza, and then you want to put an IS200, you can just give us a shout, send the harness, and we can adapt that for you guys. But we're going to get this off, get this off to the customer Hando. He can then get the car running, which is engines already in, and then he can get on his merry way and driving it. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching Hando, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.